In the summer of 2006, Gordon Ramsay embarked on his first International Kitchen Nightmares episode, leaving the UK to assist struggling British restaurateur Lawrence Davy. Lawrence had received £40,000 from his father to open La Pala de Buriana in Malaga, Spain, aiming to offer British holidaymakers a dining experience distinct from the typical fare of meat and chips found in tourist spots throughout the country. But the restaurant lacks a clear culinary direction, as Lawrence has taken it upon himself to invent several unusual dishes, including prawns and chocolate sauce, and chicken stuffed with banana. Why do you want to fuck around and put chocolate sauce on there? Um, because I don't want to be boring. I want to be excited. Despite holding a catering degree, possessing experience as a manager of a big restaurant in London, and receiving startup capital from his father, Lawrence's restaurant, La Pata, is struggling 18 months after its opening having incurred a loss of £20,000 in his first year. In response to the downturn, Lawrence decided to increase the menu's variety to an overwhelming 72 items, with everything from Chinese chicken to Turkish kebabs, further complicating the restaurant's identity. With takings down year over year, Lawrence worries that without a successful summer, the restaurant won't make it through the winter off-season months. Upon meeting Lawrence, Gordon discovers that he has incurred over €100,000 of debt so far. I've either got to make it here or go back to London and pay back my father. As he sits down to try their lunch service, Gordon is bewildered by the menu's extensive variety. He samples Lawrence's unique creation, a spicy prawn dish with chocolate sauce. Gordon says such a dish is the result of stupid arrogance, as he puts it. The next dish is a fillet steak kebab, presented hanging from a hook, which leads Gordon to describe it as... And watched six customers with this fucking donkey's dick swinging in front of their face. Before he can get over how bad both dishes have been so far, Gordon notices smoke emanating from the kitchen. A waitress informs him it's from a dessert that's burning. It turns out the dessert was the creme catalana that Gordon ordered. Fuck me. Well, it certainly burned. It looks like a fucking ice hockey puck. Despite the outside of the dessert being burnt, the inside is runny. In the kitchen, Gordon confronts Lawrence about his culinary ambitions. The Michelin-starred chef criticizes the 26-year-old's dishes as being gimmicky. That evening, Gordon returns to observe the dinner service and sees assistant chef Norm struggling to grill chicken kebabs. Norm's strategy involves first poaching the kebabs, storing them for at least a day, then reheating them by finishing them off on the grill before finally serving them to guests. A disgusted Gordon tells Norm he shouldn't feed that to anyone, not even the local stray cats. As night envelops, Chef Norm grills in near darkness, relying on a flashlight to inspect the food. Despite the meat being pre-cooked, customers still express frustration over having to wait more than an hour for their barbecue. Alex, the server with an eccentric pair of sideburns, poorly manages the dining room as guests continue to wait for their food. Meanwhile, Lawrence adopts a lax approach to cooking, relying on his planche grill flat top to cook everything. And I mean everything. The following morning, Gordon arrives early to find the place in disarray, including dog poop in the dining area. Neither Lawrence nor Alex appear as concerned about the dog mess, prompting Gordon to have the staff clean the floors. The nastiness continues in the kitchen, though. Gordon discovers a buildup of thick grease in the deep fryer. Dumping out the oil, it looks more like sludge coming out. Gordon orders a thorough cleaning, with him rolling up his sleeves and taking part in the cleaning. The story continues to take a dark turn, as Gordon learns of a disastrous Valentine's dinner Lawrence hosted for a nearby donkey sanctuary charity the year prior. 100 British expats paid £100 for the charity dinner. It featured poorly prepared dishes, such as Lawrence's brilliant idea of a chicken stuffed with banana. Despite the meal being a total disaster, Lawrence still charged the guests the full price. Furthermore, the expats found Lawrence to be pretty arrogant about the whole situation, leading to many in the local community forming a very bad opinion of him and his restaurant. Gordon emphasizes the importance of local expatriates' opinions because during the winter months, they will account for 80% of visits. He needs them to get through the winter when the summer tourist hotspot becomes a ghost town. After that, Gordon visits the Donkey Sanctuary for their perspective. The charity members recall their disappointing experience, mentioning Lawrence's weird chicken stuffed with banana and a side of asparagus. They also said he was too arrogant about the whole experience, pissing off the local expat community. Gordon kindly asked them to give Lawrence a second shot. 
They agree to, but only on one condition. Do you serious. promise us we don't have to eat chocolate-covered prawns? <laughs> After meeting with the local expats, Gordon understands that he must convey to Lawrence the importance of abandoning gimmicky dishes in favor of emphasizing fresh, local ingredients that truly stand out. To highlight the issue with the menu's odd flavor pairings, Gordon blindfolds Lawrence and Alex and then has them drink smoothies crafted from the menu's unusual combinations, like the chocolate prawns and chicken blended with banana. They struggle to identify the flavors, unanimously agreeing that the taste of the concoctions is quite unappealing. Once the blindfolds are removed, they are shocked to discover Gordon had mixed prawns and chicken in the blender for their smoothies. The reaction is one of disgust, yet it's an undeniably effective way to make his point. Now that he's gotten their attention, Gordon suggests simplifying the menu to 12 items. But Lawrence insists on maintaining his complex menu. Gordon prepares an alternative, three-course menu for that evening's service to serve alongside Lawrence's extensive offerings. Using his original menu, Lawrence struggles with order backlogs, long ticket times, and plenty of return dishes. Despite that, though, Lawrence refuses to switch to Chef Ramsay's simplified menu. Seriously? Not yeah? No. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Hey, this has nothing to do with your bollocks and size of your cock, is it? No. Eventually, though, later in the evening, he concedes and agrees to switch to Gordon's menu. But the change comes too late to salvage the rest of the service. Confusion ensues as servers attend to empty tables while customers endure long waits, resulting in refunds. This place right now is the biggest shithole in Spain. It's fucking embarrassing. Despite the chaos, Lawrence unjustly blames Gordon's menu for the evening's failures, saying it put Norman under too much pressure on the grill. Frustrated by their excuses, Gordon exits the kitchen while saying goodbye. Chef, I'm fucking out of here. Fuck yourself. Things go from bad to worse. The next day, they discover a burglary overnight has resulted in the theft of more than 5,000 euros that was stored on site. Gordon requests to see the safe, only to find the money was kept in a mere box within a filing cabinet. The thieves left the small notes, only taking the big bills. The absence of secure storage for the money is startling. Exhausted, Lawrence even contemplates at that point giving up and returning home. Gordon introduces Lawrence to a matador class to illustrate the need for proper training. At first, Lawrence has difficulty with the charging bulls. Yet, Lawrence perseveres and eventually finds success in the class, boosting his morale. Back at the restaurant, the next thing Gordon needs to get through to Lawrence about is his use of the plancher grill to cook everything. Gordon cooks an egg in a pan, while Lawrence uses a grill to do the same. The difference between the two eggs is striking, as the one cooked on the planche grill is blackened from all the built-on grind that's more than just a patina. Acknowledging Gordon's advice, Lawrence adopts new cooking techniques, appreciating the freshness of cooking with pots and pans. For the relaunch, Lawrence has thankfully agreed to cut the menu down from 72 items to just 15. In another change, Gordon repositions Norm to assist Lawrence in the kitchen, with Tom, the pot washer, manning the grill instead. Hopefully Tom is up to the task, although at this point probably anyone would be better than Norm at working the barbecue. This is Lawrence's chance at a second shot with the British expat community after the embarrassing fundraising dinner for the local donkey sanctuary. The evening begins smoothly until Alex neglects to serve wine before the starters. Overbookings and miscommunication lead to delays in a rush service, overwhelming Alex. Despite the chaotic service, Lawrence manages to serve quality dishes thanks to the more manageable, slimmed-down menu. Alex is encouraged to apologize to Lawrence, and the charity expresses willingness to return, citing improved food quality despite the service issues. Gordon leaves a donkey statue as a reminder for them not to repeat their past mistakes, with four weeks of the holiday season remaining. Gordon returns for a second visit at the end of the summer. Now the place is a ghost town with the end of the tourist season, when he gets to La Parra, he's delighted to find Spanish cuisine still featured on the menu. Best of all is that Lawrence hasn't even touched the planche grill in weeks. Ramsay samples the new dishes and is very satisfied with the food and flavors. He gets a squid and sausage dish that he says perfectly pairs together. Lawrence shares the good news that the restaurant is finally financially successful. It is now turning a profit, allowing Lawrence to reduce his debts by 13,000 euros. Gordon leaves satisfied with hope that the restaurant will survive another year. A year later, in the summer of 2007, Gordon returned to the restaurant for a revisit. 
He's surprised that not only is the restaurant still open, but it is packed when he gets there. He's greeted by a cheerful Lawrence, who shares that sales have surged by an impressive 50%, with some months even seeing a doubling in revenue compared to the previous year. Lawrence mentions the restaurant is performing so well that he's contemplating expansion and the opening of several more restaurants. However, Ramsey's optimism quickly fades when he reviews the menu, surprised to find it includes Italian pasta and bread and butter pudding. This raises the question, is Lawrence's menu unnecessarily expanding to incorporate too many non-Spanish dishes again? The situation deteriorates further when Ramsey's meal is served. He discovers the food quality has diminished. The pasta is mushy, and the bottom of the bread and butter pudding is burnt. Lawrence, however, refuses to acknowledge any fault for the decline in food quality, maintaining his stance of denial. With time running out and a flight to catch the next day, Ramsey manages to convince a hesitant Lawrence to meet him at 9 a.m. sharp the following morning at the restaurant. Gordon leaves that evening, believing Lawrence should not consider opening more restaurants until he perfects the first one. Think about it. A chain of La Paris? Fuck me. The next morning, before heading over to the restaurant, Gordon speaks with members of the local British expat community to directly understand their culinary preferences while they're in Spain. Unanimously, they express a desire for Spanish cuisine over British or any other types of food when in Spain. Armed with this insight, Gordon proceeds to the restaurant for his 9 a.m. meeting with Lawrence as agreed upon. Upon arrival, however, he finds a restaurant closed with neither the staff nor Lawrence present to welcome him. Eventually, closer to 10 o'clock, Lawrence and Alex casually arrive. Sitting down to review the menu, Gordon points out its excessive size and deviation from focusing on fresh local ingredients, which once again triggers Lawrence's defensiveness. In an effort to make a breakthrough with Lawrence, Gordon organizes a beach cook-off, pitting his paella recipe against Lawrence's penne pasta in a head-to-head -head competition. As Gordon anticipated, the British expats prefer the paella, choosing it over Lawrence's pasta. Back at the restaurant, Gordon takes the stage to inform the patrons about the beach competition he and Lawrence had earlier that day, hinting that losing the competition will have certain consequences. Now I'm going to come up here and have a little dance. Come here, come here, come here! Let Lawrence is compelled to dance on stage despite his best efforts to escape. Somehow, he also manages to persuade Chef Ramsay to join him in the dance. The revisited episode concludes as Gordon contemplates the restaurant's future and its chances of survival. Unfortunately, La Parra closed its doors for good the following year in 2008. The Donkey Sanctuary posted on TripAdvisor that Lawrence had done a runner, and it closed the day prior. The good news was that they rescued the donkey that Chef Ramsay had given them. The reason behind Lawrence's closing his restaurant remains somewhat unclear, yet it's plausible that the economic downturn especially severe in Spain due to the credit crunch at the time, played a significant role in his decision. Although another TripAdvisor post from prior to their closing said that La Parra had gone back to its old ways after Kitchen Nightmares. When it comes to memorable moments from Kitchen Nightmares, Lawrence's chocolate prawns dish has, rather infamously, secured its spot as one of the most criticized dishes in the show's history. It's frequently mentioned in discussions about the least appetizing creation Chef Ramsay encountered on the program. The authenticity of Gordon Ramsay's paella, especially his choice to include chicken alongside seafood, has stirred some debate. While some question the traditional accuracy of the recipe, others find the British pronunciation of paella as paella more amusing and perhaps a bit irksome to the locals. Now you're in Spain. Would you come for a bowl of pasta or would you come for a paella? Paella. paella. There's also been scrutiny over the theft incident, with opinions divided between criticism of Lawrence for the inadequate security of the money and skepticism about the legitimacy of the incident itself. Following the closure of La Parra, the location reverted back to Spanish ownership and underwent some minor renovations. Following the renovations to the exterior and patio area, the location reopened as Terraza La Parra. It's still open today and has very good reviews, with 4.5 stars on TripAdvisor and 4.6 stars on Google. It's popular with both locals and tourists alike. Post-restaurant, Lawrence moved back to the UK and transitioned to a more conventional employment route, joining the M&B pub chain. His career took another interesting turn when he later joined Jamie Oliver's restaurant chain, a move that might raise an eyebrow or two, especially considering Ramsay's known rivalry with Oliver. 
In 2011, Lawrence entered a new chapter in his personal life by marrying David Bowes and adopting his husband's surname to become Lawrence Bowes. By 2016, Lawrence's career had taken another pivot, this time into hotel management, becoming the operations director for the Hush Health Estate. Despite leaving the role after two years, he remained involved as a consultant, showing a pattern of not staying too long in one place. In 2019, Lawrence took on the role of food and beverage coordinator at Dreamland Margate Amusement Park in Kent, England, stepping into a position where his expertise could shine. The park had recently emerged from administration, and Lawrence played a pivotal role in achieving record-breaking sales and profits for the year, as he proudly notes on his LinkedIn profile. Life seemed to be on an upward trajectory for Lawrence at 39, with his professional endeavors flourishing and his personal life stabilizing in marriage. Yet, in April 2020, a month before his 40th birthday, the tide turned with the onset of the pandemic. The amusement park was forced to issue closure orders, leading to the redundancy of his position, a setback amidst an otherwise promising career. In response to the pandemic-induced shutdowns, Lawrence chose to strike out on his own once more. He established Bose Hospitality Limited, a consultancy firm dedicated to guiding others through the complexities of launching, managing, and steering a course through the inherently difficult hospitality industry. His LinkedIn profile highlights his commitment to validating his consultancy advice through practical application. He and his team launched and managed not just one, but three hotels in Kent. Among these ventures was the Hotel Leicester, notable for its historic significance as it sits near the original Leicester Square, a site with medieval roots. Lawrence, alongside David, poured considerable effort into rejuvenating these properties, embodying a hands-on approach to the restoration and management. In 2021, Lawrence and David had the opportunity to feature the Leicester Arms on Four in a Bed. This British reality TV series invites B&B owners to stay at each other's properties, rate their experiences, and ultimately compete for the title of best value for money. During their episode, Lawrence shared how he and David first met with a surprising twist. Lawrence had been David's boss at a nightclub prior to his venture in Spain with La Pala. I hired Danny as a glass collector, purely on his credentials for being the best for the job, obviously. <laughs> While the feedback from guests was largely positive, there were a few critiques regarding cleanliness and the absence of jam or marmalade at breakfast. Lawrence's reply to the breakfast feedback, the guests could have simply asked for jam, subtly echoes his previous stint in Spain. Jam. If they wanted jam and marmalade, then they're quite free to ask for it. Showing a familiar reluctance to digest customer feedback with grace. The Leicester Arms was even nominated as a finalist for Best Pubs to Bring Your Dog in the Great British Pub Awards in 2022. Here is Lawrence with one of his two white German shepherds, Artemis, who is the official pub dog at the Leicester Arms. When he's not working, Lawrence enjoys volunteering his time. He's been a captain in the Army Cadet Force with over 12 years of experience. The UK Army Cadets is a volunteer organization that trains young people in leadership, teamwork, and self-discipline for personal and, potentially, military success. Controversy resurfaced for Lawrence last year when animal rights activists targeted the Rock Inn at Chittingstone in Kent, a pub he operates. They claimed it hosts fox hunters, a practice they oppose and wish to see abolished in the UK. Consequently, they flooded his online reviews with negative feedback, including posts on the official Facebook page of the establishment. Running a public establishment always comes with its risks. In 2023, Lawrence was compelled to sell the Leicester Arms Hotel due to the inability to generate any profits, according to statements he made in an interview with a local news outlet. He goes on to say, though, our award-winning mentality will continue in our other two pubs, the Rock Inn, Chittingstone, and the Royal Oak, Hawkehurst. Lawrence, now 44, has been in the hospitality sector for over 25 years. He is part of a generation that faced the worst recession since the Great Depression early in his career, followed by a once-in-a-century pandemic, all before turning 40. Without a doubt, we will hear more from Lawrence in the future. I wish him the best both in his personal and professional endeavors.